a very good Wednesday, a very good morning. We are on the main road towards Kartajati's terminal building and we are going to have a closer look at how the airport's doing now after the closure of, well almost closure of um, Bandung International Airport 100 kilometers away as flights were forcibly moved here again. It still looks very, very quiet here. It still looks the same as about a year ago when I was here for the last time. Let's um, park up and uh, have a closer look at the terminal building that was uh, damaged back then. Let me pause here real quick. First I need to tell you about the location of this airport some more and why it's here. The why is pretty easy. Indonesia has loads of money laying around and this densely populated area didn't have an international airport so they just built one. Oh wait, that's the alternate version of the history of Kartajati Airport. The 200 million dollar Kartajati International Airport was constructed to ease the heavily congested airport of Jakarta, Sukarno Hatta International Airport and has a capacity of 26 million passengers a year. The terminal building it is as it's in no way possible to get all those passengers from and to the airport using currently available transportation methods, a single two-lane toll road. The airport was opened in mid-2019 when flights from Bandung Airport were forcefully moved over to this airport. Back then there was not even a toll road from Bandung leading here, so a trip would take 3-4 to four hours where Bandung Airport is located inside the city. That's not ideal as well, but forcing passengers to take a gamble isn't either. Flights were moved back to Bandung Airport in August 2020 after continuing complaints that the location of Kartajati Airport didn't make any sense without a proper connection. It was normally just as fast as traveling to Jakarta's Sukarno Hatta Airport or Halim Perdana Kusuma Airport, which is closer if traveling from Bandung and offers quite a range of destinations. In July 2023, it was announced that flights would be moved again from Bandung to Kartajati. This second switchover took place on October 29, 2023. More on that later. Oh, there actually is a announcement of a flight. That's the first one I've ever heard here. The barrier here is because they are fixing the roof, I think. There's a machine there. And right over there is the still broken roof structure. Which was quite dangerous as there were pieces of metal hanging from it. The place that were here, that were there during the pandemic and the airport closure have gone, probably to make way for other planes to be parked up here, but currently there are none. We are standing on uh, one of the main entrance ways towards the terminal building, auxiliary road between the parking lot and the arrivals and departure area. There are a few shuttle buses and taxis here. And we'll have uh, a closer look, but uh, this road is not in use. People are camping out here. It's, uh, it's always been a thing here. These are banners for AirAsia operations here. They started flying here directly on the 29th of October when the switchover from Bandung Airport to Kartajati was made. The birdcage is still here. And the sad little garden is also still here. Yeah, this looks really sad still. Oh, the birds are gone. This used to be a birdcage. No clue why there is a birdcage on an airport, but uh, there you go. And the garden is uh, not a garden yet. This definitely leads uh, work. Yeah, no clue who uh, decided that was a good idea. Random pile of cardboard drywall here. That's International Terminal, uh, International Airport. And this is uh, entrance gate. What a shame. Well, the terminal itself looks uh, pretty dark from the outside. It's open though, as are a few restaurants and a convenience store. There's a few convenience stores here now that are all back open again. Today's arrivals. There are four more arrivals today. One from Medan that has landed two hours ago. One from Balikpapan that arrives in two and a half hours. Then two from Denpasar which arrive in three hours and in uh, Five and a half hours, and that's it for today. Oh look, a broken roof. Yeah, the roofs aren't fixed yet at all. Right on this side, you'll find that there are a few buses waiting. 
Some of the buses here will most likely go to Wendu. The fact that there is one big bus and five, six, seven, eight shuttle buses and three taxis here tells me it's not really busy. As mentioned before, October 29, 2023 was the second time flights from Bandung were moved to this airport. The first try a few years back failed because it took most travelers way too long to get to this airport. Now there is at least a proper toll road, so they gave it another try. Travel time is still over an hour though. It would be a very good thing to see Indonesia's first high-speed rail to be continued with a station at the airport, so there is a solid alternative available for those living in Jakarta, Bandung and later Karawang, as that high-speed station will be open sometime in 2024 as well. It is already clear that only a limited number of flights are actually moved here, with other flights simply dropped from the schedule or at a reduced frequency. There are a few daily domestic flights to Denpasar, Medan and Balipapan for example, but there is also one international route. AirAsia and Malaysia Airlines serve the Kartajati Kuala Lumpur route, but they operate their flights on different days of the week and only twice a week. I don't have high hopes that there will be many more flights added anytime soon, as demand just isn't there. And I know the saying, if you build it, people will use it, but it doesn't work for this airport, unfortunately. Even with a number of shuttle bus connections available right now, people find other options to travel, and seem to be actively avoiding this airport. Let's have a look inside the terminal building, shall we? People are hanging around in this empty terminal building. Some security right over there, I don't really want to film. And there's ATMs. We have a BNE branch office that's closed. We have a Mangiri at the airport and some ATMs, not a bank, <laughs> a lot of banks here. And there is a coffee shop, wow, the coffee shop's open again. That's uh, one coffee shop. And right over there in the corner are some little restaurants, I think. Yeah, we have some, uh, it's a little food court here. This is the International Departures, which still looks the same and really quiet. There's that roof that's uh, still broken, and the roof there is broken, and the roof there is still broken, look. When commercial flights were shifted away from Kartajati Airport back to Bandung again, this airport basically went into hibernation. That doesn't mean there were zero flights though, as some cargo flights operated from and to the airport during the last three years. Facilities for cargo are limited here though, so they didn't take a high flight unfortunately. Kartajati Airport also started special flights to Mecca in Saudi Arabia earlier in 2023 to accommodate travelers that want to perform a pilgrimage. A few airlines have since routinely operated a number of chartered flights and continue to do so. The owner of the airport, the Indonesian government through the provincial government of West Java, also rolled out plans to create a hub for airplane maintenance at the airport. 84 hectares is reserved for this, but any concrete development for this hub isn't showing yet as of December 2023. No Malaysia Airlines fly today as the counters are closed. I think twice a week. And if we look at the next row, those haven't even been built yet. Look, still all empty. That this airport currently doesn't run as intended is pretty obvious. But action needs to be taken to avoid this $200 million airport to go to waste. First of all, it needs to be connected with the outside world. A single toll road and some buses won't cut it, not by a long shot. My recommendation for the short term would be a train connection to the city of Cherebon, as there are active railroad tracks only 25 kilometers to the east, where people live. The area itself is mainly rice paddies, so that should not be too difficult. 
Next is the development of the area. It needs more hotels than a few that there are now, but that means that people working at and around the airport need a place to stay. Build a residential area. The plans for a maintenance hub are good, but it needs to get going ASAP. Ideally, a future high-speed rail line extension would get an airport station here as well. But that's probably the furthest away at the moment. For now, this airport can develop in more than just a regional airport with the odd international flight. Really sad, but that's what you get when you decide to build an airport in the middle of rice paddies and farmland. And that's it for me here at Kartajati International Airport in the rice fields of West Java. I hope to see you soon on another video and thank you for watching.